Complicated fractures of the lower leg can bring years of pain for the patient and costs running well into six figures. But what if a surgical implant could detect and react to variations in the post-operative recuperation and have a positive influence on healing? A broad research team of physicians, material researchers, engineers and computer scientists is investigating the feasibility of this idea. If we could recognize a healing disorder much earlier and the implement automatically adapts in such a way that we can still have a possibility to influence the bone after the operation without having to operate again, then that would be a huge advantage. The first step in this direction is to collect accurate measurement data from patients to determine how loads affect the fracture sites post-surgery. Until now, it has not been possible to determine what kind of physical stress a patient truly experiences and how this affects healing. To do so, the researchers are using sensor soles and shoes from a startup company in Munich. With each step, we can generate 82 measured values. That has already given us quite surprising information. Findings such as that the determination of a partial load is not possible. In addition to the sensor soles, the motion sequences are measured and simulated with the aid of computer models to identify loads in the fracture. At the moment, based on computed tomography data collected in the clinical, normal daily routine during patient treatment, we can create computer models in a very individualized and personalized way, and then apply to these computer models the forces that occur during normal walking of the patients. The forces are collected by means of monitoring patients. In this process, patients are equipped with various measuring devices and go through a gait parkour. With the help of musculoskeletal simulation systems, the actual muscle forces and joint forces of the patient during these exercises can be determined from this monitoring data. These are incorporated into our simulations. Therefore, if we have the patient's individual forces during walking, and at the same time, we have a personalized computer model based on their computed tomography data, we can create a highly customized computer model that allows us to simulate the forces in the patient's fracture gap during their physiotherapy exercises. Since we have a very good idea from animal studies and other experiments what movements the fracture gap has to go through in order to promote healing, we can use the simulation to assess whether the given treatment in combination with the exercises performed will achieve this movement pattern. With so much data is collected, researchers are enlisting the help of artificial intelligence and machine learning. First of all, in order for the implant to work meaningfully and as an intelligent implant, we need the simulation as a basis. To do this, we need to obtain the corresponding geometry data for the model from the CT data. While you as a human being can immediately assign the corresponding gray values to the contours and also to the functions, the computer cannot. The computer therefore must learn to generate a corresponding geometry model from the CT data. At the moment, this can be done with software support, but a great deal of the manual reworking is required. And in the future, intelligent learning will minimize the reworking process and thus accelerate this. The second area in which artificial intelligence must definitely be used is the evaluation of the large time series obtained from patient data during monitoring. Here, singular events must be filtered in order to be able to recognize the maximum loads that actually occur. The last area concerns the material parameters. When we start the simulation, we need to assign parameters for both the bones and the implants. For the implants, it is relatively easy because the parameters can be determined with appropriate tests. For the bone, of course, you can't do any tests in vivo and therefore you have to draw conclusions 
from other situations and also really use artificial intelligence to determine the numerical values that are used for the parameters and make them available. From all these measured values that we have, we work out certain movement patterns with the German Institute for Artificial Intelligence, which are then predictive. So that even without doing these simulations, we can tell patients that this movement is probably good or not good for you. And that is the knowledge superstructure that we will need to be able to control the implant later on. The implant could be controlled by the intelligent material nickel titanium. Hair-thin wires made of this material can move precisely with the aid of electrical signals. They also have sensor properties. In this way, the implant could indicate incorrect stresses at the fracture gap and one day possibly react autonomously with movement. There will probably be intermediate steps where we say, okay, the implant is measuring a detrimental situation. And a panel of experts interprets the data and says, for example, that we should remove 25% of the implant stiffness. It is a multifaceted and visionary project. We hope that we will be able to get through it in time to a certain extent so that at the end we really do have a demonstrator and can say that it is functionally possible to process measured values automatically in such a way that an implant adapts to affect positive outcomes.